Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mouse Club podcast. My name is Marissa and I am the host of this podcast. So welcome back if you've been here before and welcome if you are new. Welcome to the Mouse Club. Today's going to be a very exciting uh, podcast for Mental Health Awareness Month. So I hope that you all enjoy. Today I am going to be um, talking about a very popular fan theory that the Winnie the Pooh characters represent different forms of mental health. And while I was actually doing research for this podcast, I found another article that I actually found to be very interesting, which is that essentially the different Winnie the Pooh characters are the author's um, way of coping with his post-traumatic stress disorder from World War I. So I'm really excited to share these thoughts with you guys in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, I myself have been struggling with OCD since I was 14. If you are interested in hearing more about that, you can check out my YouTube channel, Marissa Potts, if you want to hear my full story. But Mental Health Awareness Month is just so important to me because it's so important to raise awareness and it's so important to know to share with people that they are not alone. So I really hope that this video is interesting to you guys. It's a very interesting topic and I'm just really excited to share with you all what I have discovered in my research. It is crazy storming outside, by the way. So if you can hear the rain and the wind, I apologize. It literally feels like a hurricane in Atlanta, but when it gets like this, it literally doesn't stop. And I need to record this podcast episode. So I apologize if you can hear it, but I'm hoping that you can. not So anyway, I'm going to start with um, some Disney news as usual. So I don't have that much this week, um, surprisingly, because the past few weeks have been full of news. But I do have a couple interesting things to share with you all. Um, I did want to say I have been obsessed with two shows on Disney Plus, which are Prop Culture and Dog's Life, or It's a Dog's Life, I think is the real title. Um, Prop Culture is basically about this man who is a avid film geek, and he basically goes around the country and around the world to find movie props from old Disney movies, and it is just an amazing show. My favorite episodes so far were the Mary Poppins episode and the Chronicles of Narnia episode. And it's just so sweet. He actually um, brought the girl who plays Jane in Mary Poppins, her jacket from when she was a kid and played Jane and she started crying. It was so beautiful to me. The episode was just so beautiful because Tony Walton, who did the set production and who did the costume design, he was married to Julie Andrews at the time. I actually just read about this in her book, Homework. So it was really interesting to see the behind the scenes as well. But it's just beautiful because... Um, they did get divorced shortly after, but Tony Walton, you can just tell he still cares so much for Julie and he loves her so much. And it was just a b- really beautiful episode. So highly recommend Prop Culture if you guys are looking for something to watch. And It's a Dog's Life. It is um, hosted by Bill Farmer, who is, he has been the voice of Pluto and Goofy for years and years. And it's basically about working dogs. There's only like one episode out right now, but it's super, super good. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So if you love dogs, you will probably enjoy it as well. Um, Anyway, okay, well, let's get into the Disney news. So the first piece of news that I have for you guys is that there is going to be a behind the scenes making of Frozen 2, I guess, documentary coming to Disney+. Plus. It is called Into the Unknown and it is going to be out on June 26th. I'm really, really excited to see that because behind the scenes of animation is so, so cool to me and I'm really interested to see how they incorporated Norwegian culture and just all that fun stuff. So I'm really excited to see it. Um, my husband Blake actually just watched the behind the scenes Star Wars documentary that's on Disney Plus and he thoroughly enjoyed it. So I know that this one is probably going to be really good as well. So that's June 26th if you guys are interested in seeing that. Another piece of news that is honestly really, really, really sad is that Frozen will not be reopening on Broadway. It is permanently closing on Broadway due to the economic impacts of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, it had 26 previews and 825 regular performances, and unfortunately, since they're not going to be opening up instead, there is one little piece of good news, which is that they will be going on a national tour, um, next year is when they are planning to do it, and in order to save some money, they're going to be reusing a lot of props and costumes and sets from the original production, so I think that will be super cool, and I'm really, really excited to see it when it comes, I'm really sad about all these Broadway closures and everything. A lot of things have been closing down. 
I have been waiting for years to see Anastasia on Broadway, which I know isn't technically Disney, but still going to talk about it anyway because it was co- supposed to come to Atlanta in August. And unfortunately, I don't know if it's going to still be coming in August. And if it is, it's probably going to be pushed back. So I hope it still comes because I've been dying to see it. So we shall see. But it's really, really sad how everything is changing just so fast right now. The next piece of news I have is that Disney Springs is going to begin a phase reopening. It's going to start on May 20th. There's a lot of guidelines for it, including self-parking in orange and lime garages. There's going to be a lot less um, capacity in Disney Springs. All guests three and up must wear face masks. They have to be worn at all times except at dining tables. This one I find very interesting because I don't know how they're going to be able to keep that... um, what's the right word? Keep that in effect. Um, I feel like people will wear them to get in and then they'll take them off. Honest, just honestly, as a previous team member and cast member, like working at Universal at a roller coaster, when people had to put their bags and stuff in the lockers, people would just shove them up their shirts or put them in their pants or hide them somewhere. You have no idea how many times I have found bags with wallets full of cash and IDs and passports, just like stuffed in a corner somewhere where anyone could easily access it and I have to turn it into security. Like people just sometimes don't think when they come into the parks and I feel like people just don't really care. So I'm really interested to see how that works because so far from what I've seen from City Walk, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, um, it doesn't seem like people are being very, um, what's the right word, diligent when it comes to wearing their masks. So I don't really know how Disney is planning to mandate that people keep them on the whole time. Um, But anyway, there's also going to be temperature screenings as people walk in. If anybody has 100.4 or higher, they're going to be sent to another room to reevaluate. And if they again test at 100.4 or higher, they will not be permitted to enter. So they strongly encourage any guests to check their temperature before they enter the park. There's also going to be social distancing required in queues and there's going to be physical barriers put up. Disney has also said that they're going to be doing more cleaning and disinfecting throughout the park, including like handrails and door handles and things like that. And then they're going to have hand washing and sanitizing stations. And lastly, they encourage cashless transactions. It said that they strongly discourage cash. So I don't know like if they will still be able to take cash or if they are cutting it off entirely, but it did say on the website that they encourage cashless transactions like Apple Pay um, or credit cards that you can use yourself without having to pass it on to a cast member. So those are um, the guidelines that they have laid out so far. So we shall see how that goes. I will talk about it again next week to kind of see how it is going. And then, like I said, last week, City Walk did begin reopening this week. Um, They also are going in phases. They're also requiring people wear face masks. I don't believe that they're doing a temperature screening from the research that I have done so far, but um, they are requiring face masks, and obviously they're encouraging people who are sick to stay home. Also, decreased park attendance, social distancing in queues, etc., like that. Um, the biggest thing that I've seen is that Penelope from, what is it called? Twosome Chocolate Emporium. Um, I believe her name is Penelope. She's the doctor. She's like a face character that works there. She, um, she was wearing a face mask, which I found really, really interesting. And she was protected by a barrier and basically like talking to people as they walked by. So I really appreciate that they did that to keep her protected and keep her safe because I've been wondering what they're going to do with face characters throughout the park. Um, I definitely don't think that they're going to be doing meet and greets anytime soon because that is just not good for kids um, to hug the cast members and to hug face characters. It's just not a good situation. So we'll see how that goes. But I did appreciate them protecting her with that. So yeah, kudos to Universal. I appreciate that for sure. And yeah, that is all of the Disney news that I have for you this week. All right, so getting into our episode, this week we are going to be talking about Winnie the Pooh and mental illness. And I'm sure a lot of you have probably heard these theories before that each of the characters represents a different mental illness. It's obviously most likely just theory um i mean he wrote this back in like the 30s i believe so it was a long 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 time ago um and mental health definitely was not as like 
well known as it is today um, or talked about very much. Um, it all started this whole theory with a, um, what's it called, article from the Canadian Medical Association Journal. And the article was honestly like satire. It was supposed to be funny, um, but people took it really seriously. And there is like a lot that we can kind of learn from it, even though it was like kind of a joking article. Because I think that the characters definitely do have their own struggles. Whether or not they were supposed to be representative of, of different things, who knows? Probably not. But an article that I found really, really interesting while I was doing research for this episode was an article by a woman named Valentina Stoicheva, is I, be I believe is how you pronounce it, from Psychology Today. So if you'd like to read the full article, you can definitely go check that out on Psychology Today. Again, her name is Valentina Stoicheva. I believe it was two different articles that I read. And from her perspective, she read the original um, Canadian Medical Association Journal article and she disagrees with the fact that they each represent different mental illnesses. And from her perspective, she believes that A.A. A. Milne, who wrote Winnie the Pooh, it is um, pretty well known that he, he suffered from what a lot of people believe was post-traumatic stress disorder from his time in World War I. And she believes that unconsciously or subconsciously, when he was writing this book, he created these characters to personify different experiences that he was experiencing while he was living with post-traumatic stress disorder. And honestly, reading this blew my mind because it made so much sense because of all the different ways that he was probably dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder and unconsciously or subconsciously putting it into his stories without even knowing. And I find that so, so interesting. So I wanted to share both perspectives from the Canadian Medical Association Journal and also from Valentina Stoicheva, I believe is how you pronounce her last name. So I really hope that you guys enjoy this episode. Again, it is Mental Health Awareness Month, so I wanted to raise awareness for different mental health issues and let people know that they are not alone and I, I am struggling. Um, and yeah, I, I just really hope you guys enjoy this episode. I think it's going to be really, really interesting. So I feel like you guys are going to enjoy it. <laughs> So first off, we're going to start with Winnie the Pooh. Um, there's a lot of different um, theories about Winnie the Pooh from the Canadian Medical Association Journal. She believes that he has ADHD and OCD. I personally don't see that at all, really. Um, her, um, her, what's it called, reasoning for this is because he is impulsive with his attempts like when he was trying to get honey by disguising as a rain cloud and he has an obsessive fixation on honey he also has repetitive counting um however through valentina's article she believes that he has dissociation because of ptsd so since i'm not a psychologist i'm going to read word for word what she says in her article she basically says dissociation is not a primary symptom of ptsd but rather a sort of quality of our presence of mind the mind resorts to dissociating itself from reality or from the traumatic situation so to speak when the situation is so unbearable that the alternative is to lose one's mind simply put when our body cannot leave the traumatic situation the mind does in order to protect us Many trauma survivors report that they left their bodies during the experience, that they observed themselves from afar, or that the world simply did not seem real at the time of the event. So I find that really, really interesting because of the fact that A.A. A. Milne was in World War I and that these characters could represent the different things that he, were, he was definitely feeling at the time when he wrote this book. The next character is Piglet, and he is thought of to have anxiety from both perspectives from the Canadian Medical Association Journal and also from Valentina's article. He's in a um, perpetual state of anticipating danger. He has social anxiety, um, which you can definitely see throughout the movie and throughout the books. Um, and it says that loud noises may startle him before the traumatic event takes place. And he's always he's always stressed or anticipating danger um, from Piglet's perspective. Next is Eeyore, and he is depression. Um, he is constantly negative. He has low energy, and that is another symptom of having post-traumatic stress disorder, which A.A. A. Milne may have been facing at this time. Um, 
so that is super super interesting um Eeyore is thought to be depressed in a lot of different articles or theories. It's very easy to see this, um, but Eeyore is one of my favorite characters because he's just the sweetest thing ever, and it's it's so cute when he makes those little comments like, oh well, guess I'll just go home, or things like that. It's so, so sweet. Um, but from what Valentina says, she says that the aftermath of trauma can leave us feeling ashamed, alone, and drowning in self-criticism, much like self-deprecating Eeyore, and it can rob us the experience of joy or pleasure, even activities that we used to enjoy before the trauma occurred. So I definitely think that that is super true about Eeyore. The next character is Owl, and um, in the article from the Canadian Medical Association, he is um, thought to have dyslexia, but I don't really see that very much. I agree more with Valentina's perspective that he has a difficulty with intimacy, which is another thing that happens in people who have post-traumatic stress disorder. So basically, um, she says that he can only connect through intellectualizing. He has a loss of playfulness, imagination, and creativity, which may have been things that the author was experiencing at that time. You can definitely see that in Owl, the way that he communicates with people, the way that he has really no idea what's going on. He's just lost in his stories. So I can definitely see that for sure. Next is Tigger. Um, Tigger is thought to have ADHD in the Canadian Medical Association Journal, but um, Valentina believes that he is unsettled and hyperactive and that she believes that he is experiencing some of the arousal and reactivity symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, um, that he has a difficulty concentrating, he has a racing mind, um, he, she feels like People who struggle with that, um, they constantly feel like their mind is racing or moving faster than their ability to catch it, which is something that we can definitely see with Tigger. He's always going. He's always um, ready for the next step. He's always excited. Um, so we can definitely see that with him um, for sure. She also says that impulsivity and engaging in risk behaviors are recognized as a symptom of PTSD and for someone who has survived a life-threatening or terrifying situation, survival guilt may also lead to daring fate. So that is super, super interesting as well that um, survival guilt could be the reason that he <laughs> is so daring and so ready to do things that put him at risk. That is super interesting to me. Next is Rabbit. A lot of people believe that he has OCD. I don't really see that. I more so agree with Valentina that he has a narcissistic personality disorder, um, that he um, organizes others, he's predictable, he's irritable. Um, she says in his article that that is one of the ways that people um, with post-traumatic stress disorder can feel like there's less chaos in their lives is that they are rigid in their assistance on order and predictability and they're irritable when this does not exist she says um, the obsession with rules and regulations serves a purpose to ward off the existential anxiety that if rules do not exist or are not followed to the letter a new and overwhelming catast catastrophe may occur i find that so so interesting um that that is how rabbit works that he really likes to organize people he really likes to have things set in place they talk about kanga a little bit in the articles that she has social anxiety i don't really know if that is the case to be honest um and they say that rue has autism i really think that that's a stress to be a stretch <laughs> i meant to say to be honest that is from the um canadian medical association journal i don't believe that either of those I can't really see any of those tendencies in them, but that is something I guess we could look into if you guys are interested in that, but I don't really feel that. But anyway, those are really all of the characters that I have to talk about, so I hope that you really enjoyed this little analysis of the different characters. I find it so interesting that A.A. A. Milne could have subconsciously been putting those traits that he was probably experiencing back in that time into these characters probably as a way of making himself feel like he was not alone and to, to find other characters that were experiencing the same, same things he was. And I really enjoy Valentina's analysis because I've seen so many, so many times the different um, 
articles and memes about um, the different Winnie the Pooh characters and how they um, have different mental illnesses and I definitely like her analysis a little bit more that they are just coping with um, different symptoms of PTSD. So if you want to read either of those articles, again the first one is from the Canadian Medical Association Journal. It is a pretty um, satirical article and then the more serious one by Valentina Joysheva is in Psychology Today. But I hope that you guys enjoyed. I'm going to have one more Mental Health Awareness Month video coming out next week. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. Or not video, but episode. I apologize. I hope that you enjoy. And um, then I'm probably going to start working on some summer episodes for you guys. So I hope that you enjoy those. And if you have any thoughts about this episode or about any of these analyses, let me know on my latest Instagram post at the Mouse Club Podcast. If you would like to follow along, that would be great because I do post polls and have you guys participate in different episodes. So do go check us out at the Mouse Club Podcast. And again, I do have some mental health awareness videos over on my YouTube channel. It's called Marissa Potts if you want to go check those out. And anyway, guys, I hope that you're having a wonderful, wonderful week, staying safe out there, and I'll see you next week with a new episode. Bye! Thank you so much for listening to the Mouse Club Podcast. To find us on Instagram, follow us at the Mouse Club Podcast. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Mouse Club Podcast or on our website, themouseclubpodcast.com to find all of our episodes, links to our social channels and our youtube channel which will be coming soon to follow our host marissa potts that's me check me out on youtube marissa potts on tiktok at marissa.potts on instagram at little miss maris m-r-s maris thanks so much for listening see you next week bye